Thanks be to you, O God, that we have risen this day. To the rising of this life itself. Be the purpose of God between us and each purpose. The hand of God between us and each hand. The pain of Christ between us and each pain. The love of Christ between us and each love. O God, who brought us to the bright light of this new day. Bring us to the guiding light of eternity. We gather in God's name. We claim Christ's promised presence. Let us pray. Christ as a light illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. A reading from the prophet Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us read together this portion of Psalm 85. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasures of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, 
as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promise, promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me the, at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved and out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Make these words more than words and give us all the spirit of Jesus. Amen. I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. I want to know what that conversation was like. Amos is minding his own business, and then the next thing he knows, he's on a mission from God. How do these things happen? How do we know when God is calling us? How do we know what to say? Why prophesy? Our two stories this morning give us a little insight to answering these questions. My name is Trip Hudgens. I live in Richmond, Virginia with my wife and son, two cats and two hermit crabs. Thanks so much to Terry for this chance to preach even for the next three Sundays. We're going to be talking about prophecy a lot, so let's dig in. Amos was a shepherd, a guy with a tree trimming business. That's all. He wasn't a court prophet. He wasn't a court prophet's son. He didn't go to prophet camp as a kid. Amos was woefully unprepared for the work that he had been called to do. But nonetheless, we have this compelling and terrifying 
story of an unlikely hero telling it like it is. That's what prophecy is, you know. Amos wasn't an oracle. That's not how we should understand prophecy in the Hebrew scriptures. He didn't cast stones and foretell the future. Prophecy is simply the ancient art of telling the truth. And sometimes that truth is powerfully frightening and even dangerous. In Amos' day, corruption was rampant. The wealthy of Israel were taking advantage of the poor. We might put it in a different way in our own times, like wealth disparity or pay gap. The rich getting richer as the poor get poorer is an old, old story. On top of that, there was an empire conquering smaller, weaker neighbors and expanding their territory. And as history tells us, Babylon would indeed conquer Israel, sending many of her citizens into exile. The Babylonian exile is how we know it in Christianity. God knows what's coming. God needs someone to tell Israel. I cannot begin to guess how many people God asked to share this hard news with the people of Israel. But Amos took on the responsibility of saying something. Someone has to, you know. Someone has to tell the truth about what's going on and what the consequences will be. The God of Amos is tired and he has lost patience. Israel has backed out of its covenant with God. Someone has to say something. Say something. Somebody. Someone has to say something when everything has come undone like they had in Amos' day. So Amos did. And no one heeded his warning. And what he saw coming does indeed come to fruition. Everything came apart. Amos and his warning will later disappear into the hills. As far as any of us know, Amos was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamore trees for the remainder of his days. John's story that we have in our gospel this morning ends a little differently. John's story shows us how prophecy can be risky work. Whenever we speak truth to power, the powerful might just strike back. Amos, as far as we know, suffers no consequences for his indictment of Israel. John the Baptist is not so lucky. He gets caught up in the intrigue of the court and is executed. His death was a reality check for both his disciples and the disciples of Jesus. Mark and Matthew both tell versions of this story. John's death was a pivotal event in the life of the early movement, our movement, the Jesus movement. Speaking truth to power can get you killed. I wonder if the disciples were starting to put those pieces together where their own lives and the life of Jesus were concerned. Did they begin to understand where all this truth-telling might lead? Did they start the ask, to ask themselves this same question that we we're asking this morning? Why prophesy? Why tell these hard truths? What kind of good news is that? The answer is simple. Because God has asked us to. God is always asking us to. We know God's voice because we feel that tugging in our hearts when we find ourselves saying, somebody should say something. Friends of God, God is always asking us to speak out for the poor and the oppressed. She is always asking us to read the writing on the wall where injustice and corruption are concerned. God is always asking us to enter into covenant with her and fall in love with creation again and again and again and say something. Someone should say something. Amen. Let us say together this affirmation of our faith. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female, and the beautiful diverse variables between and within. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, 
servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. As a man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be present everywhere, and God's kingdom will come to earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecost fire, life-giving breath of the church, source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. Spirit of fire, inflame in us a passion for justice and equality. That we may know the cleansing of our prejudice and fears and proclaim your freedom boldly, caressing your earth with humility. Spirit of compassion, infuse us with your longings for wholeness and happiness. That we may reach out to those who are hurting and disordered, enfolding on another with your love and tenderness. Spirit of wisdom, be within us in our journeying. Gently guide us along right paths. That we may be led towards transformation and the new beginnings in our world. Spirit of gentleness, touch us anew releasing in us all that we are afraid of. That we may know your acceptance of us and freely accept and embrace others. Spirit of power, we pray especially for those who are sick and suffering. Please add your own petitions. Hold us in our powerlessness. that we may know your strength and become a voice for the voiceless, healing for the wounded and empowerment for the weak. Spirit of judgment, be tender with us and show us your mercy. That we may humbly re learn of you and not be afraid of your prophets in the world. Spirit of comfort, Draw near to us in grief and confusion and pain, especially for these who have died. Please offer up prayers for your family and friends. In your graciousness, bring hope, consolation, and renewal. That many may look and discover you in their midst. Spirit of dance, be our playfulness that we may leap and laugh and enter your joy. Give us confidence in life and assurance in death. May the Spirit of God heal our bodies and make them places of communion. May the breath of God heal our hearts and set them on fire for justice. May the Spirit of God heal our nation and the world. Amen. Amused God, you know better than we do what important people we think we are. Believing we have to be serious all the time, we miss out on the joy of your creation. Choosing to feast on the pain of the world, we skip the picnic offered in paradise. Clinging to the despair which is our best friend, we ignore Jesus who can bring us home to your heart. Forgive us, heart of joy and make us open to the startling and upside-down ways in which you work. Fill us with Easter's laughter. Fill us with your healing joy. Fill us with the love poured into us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The Gospels tell us over and over again of the joy which comes to us through Christ. When Jesus was around, lives were changed, the sick were healed, the sorrowful began to laugh. The good news is that this joy is now given to us, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. Through the Holy Spirit, we are gifted with joy. We are sent forth to bring good news to the oppressed, to bring healing to the broken, 
to anoint everyone with the oil of gladness. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. At supper with his friends, Jesus blessed and offered first the bread and then the cup and said, Eat and drink in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Loving God, through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing of this bread, so that we may know your touch in all bread, all matter. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now. Made one in Christ and one with each other, we offer these gifts and with them ourselves a holy and living sacrifice. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give both thanks and praise. We offer you praise, dear God, and hearts lifted high. For in the communion of your love, Christ comes close to us, and we come close to Christ. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea, and sky, we sing to you with angels of light who envelop us, with all the saints before and above us, with Columba and Bridget, Patrick and Margaret, with brothers and sisters, east and west, we sing to you. And with our loved ones separate from us, now who yet in this mystery are close to us, we join in the song of your unending greatness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, O Christ, and breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine. May they become for us your body, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing and making us whole. And as the bread and wine which we now eat and drink, may we be changed again into you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the world. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you and us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Look, the body of Christ is broken for the life of the world. Here is Christ coming to us in bread and wine, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take, eat, this is my body, by Paul Simmons. Take it, this is my body. 
flesh and live. Eat of my flesh and live. My blood was shed for many, taking away your sin. And if I shall. Let us pray. We believe, O Lord, that in this breaking of your body and pouring out of your blood, we become redeemed people. We confess that by our sharing of this sacrament, we are strengthened to endure in hope until we lay hold and enjoy its true fruits in the heavenly places. Amen. May the peace of Christ go with you, wherever Christ may send you. May this divine one guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May this holy one enliven you with all that you've been shown. May this gracious one bring you home, rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God, the Creator, Jesus who redeems us, and of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. Amen. Let us go into the world rejoicing. It is Christ who goes before us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.